from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. The tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. To Central and South America. Praise Gathering. Joining us from Costa Mesa, California are spiritual fitness trainer for Taibo, Billy and Gail Blank. Pastor of Time and Destiny Church in Hollywood, California, Gary Zamora. Founder and pastor of Miracle Center Cathedral in Kampala, Uganda, Robert Tanja. Minister of Music, pastor and Grammy Award winning recording artist, Andre and Sandra Wells. Ready to make your calls, prayer partners around America. of Generation Entertainment, Matt and Lori Crowe! Can you believe it? Come on with it! Look at all these smiling faces! Come on with it! Can you believe this? Hallelujah! You know what? The only question is, why are we here? I, I you feel know? so I mean, silly it's with like the mic. We, we have all of this talent, all of this oh. music. Can you believe what you heard on the announce today? Hallelujah. We are going to have church. Yeah. Come on! With it. <laughs> wow! Just like the announce said, you are part Amen. of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Join on in. Yeah. <laughs> this is for you, know you. What, uh, Hallelujah. You know what is uh, incredible about this? Do you, does everyone realize, everyone on the stage, you realize <laughs> that when you're singing tonight, you're not just singing to this wonderful group that is gathered here and in the overflow rooms. You're literally... Okay, I'm not wanting to put a lot of pressure on you or anything. I just, I'm just wanting you to realize, do you realize that you'll be singing to people in Egypt tonight? Yes, bless God, bless God, bless God. How about, you have a sweet little smile. How about Uganda tonight? Uganda is going to hear the word of the Lord tonight. You know what? From one of their very own. I can't hardly hear you talking. I... Well, there's just so many people in here. The sound is like, it's, it's incredible. You know what we're excited about is uh, not only do we have an incredible uh, group of people that are assembled for this broadcast. You know, this, this is so not a show. I don't know how to do a show, but I know how to hand a microphone to someone that knows how to sing. I know how to hand a microphone to someone that knows how to preach. And you know what? That's all I uh, am here for. It's really just to uh, facilitate the incredible assembly of people that God has put together tonight. And guess what? You're with us right here, right now. I don't care where you are around the world. All of us are here to say there is a reason that you're watching right now. There is a reason that you're tuned in. And you know what? You could be anywhere on this globe virtually watching this broadcast live right now. And uh, 
you know? On the count of three, everyone just say hello world and give a big love wave across One, the room. One, two, three. Hello world! Wow. Let's get, uh, I love you guys. This is fun. I want, uh, as I, as I normally do, uh, this is my pastor. Pastor, this is a, you know, an incredible thing uh, that we're doing tonight. Why don't you just, uh, just, why don't we get everybody up that's a part of the broadcast tonight. Any and everybody, you know who you are. Come on up. Why don't, Pastor, you just uh, get us started. Then, Andre, why don't you get us into a song here just right away. But Pastor Gary Zamora uh, is going to be back a little bit later on in the broadcast tonight. And uh, one of the reasons that you're here tonight, and I know uh, this because I invited you, <laughs> is, uh, is the, uh, at our church last Sunday or two Sundays ago, one of the most incredible words came forth prophetically from Pastor Gary for this nation. And I promise you something. Uh, we're going to be reading excerpts of it, and you know what? I'm going to just allow for you to interrupt this broadcast a little bit later if you want to and prophesy like you never have before. But why don't you start right now by just leading this entire progression. At the end, Pastor Andre Crouch, we got so many wonderful guests, Pastor Danny Diaz. By the way, his program, Your Days Are Written, will be airing right at the uh, conclusion of this broadcast tonight at 9.30 when we go off the air. And uh, Pastor Gary, just lead us, and let's get started uh, tonight on the broadcast. Great God, we give you praise this evening in full expectation of the glory of your presence and the wonder of your power. Father, in everything that is said, everything that is done, everything that is demonstrated, conceal every guest in your image tonight, we pray, O oh God. Father, we declare in Jesus' name that tonight will be a night of events in Christ. And we give you praise for what will happen, what you will say. We'll really hear from heaven tonight. And we thank you for your anointing presence. Every need of every person watching, we pray today, those of spiritual need, physical need, whatever their need is, we declare tonight that the word of the Lord will declare your healing, your freedom, your victory, and your blessing. And Father, we give you praise tonight. You're mighty. You're all power. All the time. Everywhere. And God is with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay. Let me just say one quick thing. Who, who thinks that I've talked long enough and who's ready for Andre? Okay, let's do it. I love you. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being here. Okay, take it away. Let's just kind of keep singing that Amen. he has done great things. How many of you can say that? He has done great things. Oh, yes, he has. Look back over your life and I'm sure you can say he has done great things. Bless his holy name. the world, wherever you are, whatever country, sing it with us. He has done. He does. So many great things the Lord has done. Oh, yes, he has. He's healed us. He's provided for us. He's made a way for us. He's protected us. He's promised us heaven. To your feet, everybody. Heal the Wherever you are around the world, sing it with it. Heal the So many great things. God has done. Heal the So many great things. Let's sing that first part. Let's go. Oh, the 
when you can do this. He loves it when you do it. Oh, your opportunity to call someone and let them know there's going to be at least three or four 20-minute segments of, of this entire choir. I'm not sure that a choir like this has ever been done here before. Thank you to Andre and to Sandra for bringing everyone coming down. Thank you so much. And if you just tuned in, this is the Praise the Lord program. I'm Matthew Crouch. This is my lovely wife, Lori. I'm just and we're just happy to be here. to be here amongst all these people here. And it's wonderful to our audience that's here. You know what, Pastor Daryl Yarborough, thank you for bringing some of your thank folks. You, Real quick, let me hug you. I just wanted to say thank you, Pastor. Uh, his he pastors right here in uh, Buena Park, La Palma, Buena Park area, near near Knott's Berry Farm. It's about three miles down the road. Okay. And you know what? He's so sweet. Uh, he's got an incredible TV program that we're in production on. It's going to be shown right here on the Trinity Broadcasting Network. He and his lovely wife are here. Yeah. And how many uh, folks from La Palma Christian Center here in the audience? A little wave here. Good. And, uh, and also, Pastor Danny Diaz, come here. Let me hug your neck. And uh, 9.30 tonight, Your Days Are Written is going to be airing an incredible documentary right here on TBN and uh, give me a little uh, just 
what is the essence of your days are written and what do you teach us uh, that will be airing right here at 930? Well, the God of eternity has written in eternity your destiny. The God of eternity has written in eternity every one of your days. Your days are written. In fact, in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, it says that before he formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you. But the you he knew was not a you. It was a purpose and it was a destiny. And he formed you specifically to accomplish that purpose and that destiny. Your days, Matt Krause's days, are indeed written. That's what it's all about. That's coming up. That was a little, uh, that was a little promo for the, for the program that's going to air tonight. Uh, and that's going to be awesome. Andre Crouch, thank you for being here. Love you very much. Sandra, come here and hug me, please. Just, I gotta hold the mic to my mouth, though. It's a family hug. Okay. There we go. Love you very much. Family photo. Um, thank you for driving all the way down. Look at me, not the camera. It's not that far. Huh? It's not that far. Okay, tell everyone in all of Southern California where your church is located. Give them the address. I know you just love to come and be with us. It's called, now. it's called the new, can you say it at home? The new, new. Christ Memorial Church of God in Christ. We're located at 133 Vaughn Street in the city of San Fernando. We love God with a passion. And we have... And we have some friends with us, too. It's Pastor Danny Graham from San Diego. They have an awesome church there under our covering. And if you want to be under a covering of people that love God, Amen. it's the new Christ Moore Church. And guess what? He's coming soon. Yes, he is. So this music is going to provoke you tonight to get to know Jesus. Amen. And if you don't know him, this is the hour. This is your day. This is your day. This is your day. This is your hour. For the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah! Now, uh, uh, this is their opportunity also to call someone. If you're watching and you love the Lord and you have some friends, just tell them, look, Andre and Sandra are going to be knocking it out. Can I take this rubber band off your hand? Yeah, it's kind of bugging me. If I, it, was, it looked painful, and I was just... Reminding him of you know, something. It was like, it was really bothering me. You know what, uh, my, my, my dad just always do that, and I didn't really realize that I was doing it until I saw myself in a picture, and I had these rubber bands <laughs> in my hand. And um, so it, 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 it kind of got to be a habit. Yeah. My father used to do that. It Yeah. It, it bottles up the anointing. So yeah. It. <laughs> it, it keeps my hand from doing this all the time. <laughs> Pastor Andre Crouch right there at Christ Memorial Church in uh, San Fernando. And for those that don't know, that is kind of in the San Fernando Valley. That makes That's sense, right. doesn't it? San Fernando, San Fernando Valley. And uh, right there near the 170 and the 5. That's right. I've been there, actually. Remember? When you were installed as pastor, I was there producing that entire show. Does That's everyone right. realize that? Brother Crouch, me, Brother Crouch, was directing when Brother Crouch was installed. Amen. <laughs> you know what? This is going to be fun. Uh, if you have never uh, heard of an incredible minister named Robert Kayanja, there is something in store for you, I promise you. From Uganda, right here, Kampala, Uganda, a, how, how, does, how does God raise up a debt-free $11 million building in Uganda with the average salary is what in uh, per month? Where, where did Robert go? He's right over there. Come here, Robert. Just real quick. Run up here. I, I have something to say about Brother Robert. Please. I was talking to my little grandma today in Phoenix, Arizona. She said, who's going to be on the program with you tonight? And I said, well, <laughs> Brother Robert Kayanja. And she said, isn't he a precious man? She oh, said, man. would you tell him that I go to Pastor Don Price's church? in Phoenix, Arizona, and she's told me some stories about you. Mm. Yes. <laughs> she sure did. Really? She said, now, now you make me wonder if she knows what she was talking about. <laughs> I, I know she is. 
that you have you been going to Pastor Price's for a long yeah, time, three years. Definitely. She said, I remember when he was a very young kid before he was was even married. Mm. And she said he has stories that he would just come mm. in airports or bus stations or train stations, I forget what she said, and just wait on the Amen. Lord. Wow. And just wait to where he was going to go. Amen. And she said, he's been coming to our church for years, and she loves you. She said to say hello for her. Amen. You know what? Uh, why don't you give us a preview of uh, what you're going to be ministering on tonight? I, I really believe tonight God is going to give us the anointing back to take what the enemy has taken from us. I really believe. I, I really believe that... that Whatever the enemy's plan was, God is going to interrupt it. And God, we are going to walk into it in the anointing of the triple. I, I really believe, Matt, God is going to do something wonderful here tonight. And I know, I, I tell you, I feel electricity already in the house in Jesus' name. And I'm, I'm so excited. I tell you, seeing uh, Bishop Crouch and his sister and the, the pastors here and everybody in this house, I tell you, we, we, we've not seen anything. And those of you who are watching, please call in your prayer request because God is going to do great miracles in this place tonight. Say, um, say hello to your homeland there in Kampala and uh, address them in your native language. And tell them that God has something in store for them tonight. Keep watching. I know Uganda uses two languages. You use Luganda, and then we use English as well. But I just want to say to everybody, Mukama Eva Zibwe, again, that call you could be on Tanava Kurava, Uganda, Tinochek Seracham, when we sit to Kemu Jaguze, Kubang and Sio Nelly, the Dokulava Chakara Chakara Makati Gamwe. That was, that was just, that was just tongues. That wasn't Ugandan. That was just tongues, wasn't I it? I could have done that. Yeah, I wanted him to interpret. I thought he had the gift of interpretation, but it's not interpreting. That'll be faster. You know. <laughs> okay, who has another uh, African dialect that speaks fluently in another African dialect? Come here. Fortune. Sister, Sister Fortune. Fortune. Fortune is. Come here real quick. Since uh, we've been talking about what the Lord's doing around the world, address your people in uh, what, what, what would be the native, native language of Zimbabwe? Shona. Okay. Talk to them right there into that camera. Welcome to the tell them that God has something incredible for their life tonight. Ndinoku Moresa I Mesem Zitara Ishewe do Jesu Christu Tino Tenda Mwari, Kutitawana Mkana Wakadai, O Kutitina Matepa Mwechete, Mu Satellite. Rambai Mushina Matamwari no kutin die anushandura mamiro ezinu munika medu. Amen. And everybody said amen. Okay. Anyone else speak any other languages? Brazil. Brazil? Come here. Arabic? Come here. Arabic. Come here. That'll be fun. Let's do it. This'll this'll be for my dad. You know, you know that my father uh at age four years old, went to Egypt as a missionary with his family, and uh, spoke Arabic as a as a young boy. So welcome, welcome everyone in Arabic, and tell them that God has got something for them tonight. Your native and <laughs> There's someone in foreign soil that understood that, and they're watching right now around the world. Can you believe it? Can you believe that? Come here. What are you gonna do? You're gonna you're gonna dance? Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, Ghana. Okay. What's the native language in Ghana? Um, there's several, but um, Chi Ashanti is um, the main predominant. Okay. Go for it. Tell them tell them that God's got something planned for him tonight. Keep watching. Nakopowa, I did my yenina, I a gana for. Na and there every year, and then ah, Nakopoya, I did some con. Then Nakopon and Mosano, and the sound of my gana so. 
no man can obey and say, I dare my aunt, Nacopo, and say, Finna can obey a man and Sasuan, and Nacopo, send Nacopo, I think, not in Nacopo, look, Sabamba, Nacosa, and the Pope, and Sankamo, and the Sankamo. That was awesome. You got any more? Come here. Come on, brother. In Brazil, they're watching right now. Are you ready? They're watching right now. Tell them that God loves them and they keep watching. Here we go. Right there. O Senhor ama o Brasil, o Senhor ama o mundo inteiro. E nós estamos aqui nos Estados Unidos representando o Brasil na igreja do pastor André Crouch. E o Senhor vai fazer muito, muitas maravilhas em nosso meio. Eu agradeço a Deus pela oportunidade que nós estamos tendo nesta noite aqui. Amém. I understood, amen. Okay. Now, all right, I got one more. Buenos noches. <laughs> Buenos noches, that's good. I was about to say, if there isn't someone that speaks Spanish in here, we got a problem. Taco. So, Pastor Danny, do you speak Spanish? Come on up here. Come Go on. for it. Pastor Danny. Now look, there's a you bunch can't. of people watching in Spanish right now, and so you, you can't tell them right preach. now. Yeah, don't 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 preach. Just just, just just a little greeting. Okay, here we go. Jesucristo es el rey de reyes y señor de señores y tiene algo especial para ti esta noche. I love it. Okay. Awesome. Hallelujah. Well, what do you want to do now? I've got, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this open to democratic vote, okay? <laughs> so what does everyone want to do? You want to sing another song? And then in a minute, uh, what we'll do is... Uh, I want to watch think, you do Taibo here in a second. You know what? We're going to do that. Uh, Billy Blanks, how many realize uh, that fitness is important? Okay, that was less enthusiastic than you know, I didn't like, say much. some things. And, uh, yes, yes. I, how many have done Taibo? Okay, wait. Wave at me real big. Okay, big, all, big wave. All the liars put their hands down. Okay. Now, Billy Blanks is going to be able to confirm. Well, I actually have it on videotape, so I'm good. I was at Tybo. Was it yesterday? Yesterday morning. Yesterday early. morning. Yes, you were. And For once. Uh, I did about 10% of the class, okay? <laughs> I mean. There are some serious people in that class. I mean, it is, it, is, it is awesome. But you know what? We have a different kind of minister on this program tonight. He's a minister of fitness. You're going to see it. I promise you. I was there. There is a gift inside of everyone, okay? Treasure. And when you tap into that gift and when you do it, it for, for a lot of you, it's going to be singing and, and supporting me. <laughs> That's your gift tonight is to support... <laughs> and to laugh at whatever I say. Okay, good. Especially you, you're on the front row. So if I say something funny, you gotta laugh, okay? Okay. Do you speak any foreign languages? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Ebonics? <laughs> okay. Do you, do you wanna welcome people in, in Ebonics? <laughs> you started it, holy mackerel. <laughs> Okay, that's enough. Okay. <laughs> Levity over. Uh, you know what? We have a different kind of minister. And I promise you, I was there at the World Training Center, Billy Blanks, and there is a gift that gets tapped into, and you get to join into that. He has a gift of enthusiasm. He has a gift of, of health. He has a gift. Of, God is all over that guy to do what he's doing. And do you realize that in this studio tonight, Billy Blanks, and the Taibo workout system that we all have seen the infomercials for is the number one selling video in the history of videotape. Okay? You ready for this? The last time we knew, it was like 55 million units have been sold worldwide. And this guy goes around the world and preaches the gospel of health like no one I've ever seen, and it was awesome, and he's going to be here in just a second. And what's going to be fun is the choir doesn't know this yet, but you guys are going to have a good workout here in a second. We're yeah. going to do punch, punch, punch. You're going to be doing punch, 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 punch here in just a few minutes. Oh, <laughs> I can't do it because I've got a skirt on. Okay. Andre, do one song for us. Don't, don't go 20 minutes. Just go for a minute, then we're going to bring Billy Blanks up, then we'll give it back to you. Yeah, right. Okay. This is a good Tybo song. 
Those of you that are watching, you can just kind of do like this.
everything you need is. Everything you need is. Everything you need is. In the house of the Lord. If you're looking for joy, it's in the house. If you're looking for peace, it's in the house. Everything you need. Everything you need, everything you need, God got it, God got it, God got it, the Lord is God, everything you need, You realize all of that afterglow was just because. <laughs> they're, so awesome. they're not used to stopping. Awesome. It's in the house. It's in the house. Everything you need is in the house. Whatever you need, God's got it. Whatever you desire, God's got it. If you're in your home right now, God's got it. Yeah. In the house, yes, in the house. It's in God's house. In God's house. The Spirit of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord. Deliverance, peace, joy. Deliverance. Do you guys, do you guys need some water? Are you okay? You want a little bit of water? So whenever, whenever anybody needs a little water, you just bring them some water, and uh, we're just gonna have a great time tonight. The whole, uh, since I'm I've musically illiterate, what when you when you started going faster, that was like a double time thing. That's a double time thing. Well, you know what? All church. that was courtesy of of Billy Blank saying that. He couldn't do Tai Bo to the first version. It was too slow, okay? So that was all courtesy. Let's make uh, Billy Blanks welcome to the Praise the Lord program tonight. Tell me about the gift that God gave you, because I experienced it. I know what it's like, and in a minute we're going to run a, real, a roll in. Tell me what the Lord put inside of you 
to teach and to preach around the world. Okay, through Taibo, God has given me an opportunity to show uh, people around the world that when it comes to physical fitness, most people, when you mention the word physical fitness, most people think of being physical. And I say that all of us are very physical people. Everything that we do every day is physical. So I always say, well, physical fitness is about being physical. Why isn't the world in shape? So it, so it, it goes to show me that I, I believe God has put inside me to, to give people a chance to understand that the best way for them to get in shape, you have to be spiritually mind-wielded to be able to get themselves in the best shape that they can get in. Now, you know what? Here, just keep that one with you. The, uh, if you haven't been to what goes on, if you hadn't ordered the videotape or, or if you haven't ordered it, give me a background of how Tybo started. And if you would, bring his mic up in the house just a little bit so everyone can hear, hear me real well. Well, basically, Tybo started off with me wanting to get my own self in good cardio shape. I won the United States Karate Championship. Uh, 17 years old, and then right. from there, it, it, I wanted to find out how to. I actually wanted to find out. I wanted to learn. A person, I truly believe, in order for a person to really know themselves, they have to know what their own body can do. And I believe most people around the world don't even know what their own body can do. Right. And right. and and they don't even know what moves their own body. You know, yeah. a lot of people don't even know what moves. Like I like the song they were saying, in the house. Yeah. Right. What house are you talking about? <laughs> this house. Yeah. So I always say, especially for, for believers, uh, you know, we, we have the word of God to, to push us to any limit that we need to go in our life. But, but when it comes to believers taking care of themselves health-wise, if it's in the house, then why haven't we got ourselves in good shape? Come on. And to me, it comes <laughs> you to can't say oh me, right. uh, If you can't say amen, say oh me. Oh, okay. Because... Yeah, go ahead. Because I believe that, you know, when you, when you look at, you know, I do, I work with the secular world, and God has given me an opportunity to go throughout the world, because I do. Jesus Christ is a big part of my life. He's, he's given me strength to be able to do all that I do today and all that I will do tomorrow. So I know that uh, when I go out and I talk to secular people, I see, I see a difference when I'm working with secular people in physical fitness. But then when, I, when it comes to me working with my brothers and sisters of Christ, I have a tendency to see that they get weak in the physical realm of pushing themselves through to be able to be in the best shape they could be in. So I just know that God has given me an opportunity now not to speak to the secular world, but also speak to the Christian world, which has, which has the power, Amen. Which, which, has the, which has the opportunity to overcome what they don't think they can overcome. Yeah. Can, can the camera see the sweat coming down the side of my face, right? <laughs> see, that was supposed to be funny now, y'all. Come on. I'm going to single you out here in a second. Okay, um, why don't we do this? Um, I had the opportunity to, I, I'm, I'm basically saying this. I experienced what Billy Blanks does at the World Training Center. I was there just a couple, yesterday, I guess it was. Mm -hmm. um, and so we videotaped it. And um, I want to just run this little roll and it just show you a little bit about what goes. But let me say this too. Did That's you it. hear that? That's she laughed out yeah. loud at me. Let me say, and... Uh, he brought his son. What age was he? Cody. Where's Cody? Is he's, he'll, he'll hear his name. Go he, ahead. He was a good example. Cody came down and he worked out with his, with his, with his father in the workout. And in, in the studio, you get a chance to see what hinders a, an adult. You, him, as an, him as an adult, his son as a child, was, his mind was open to be receptive, yeah. to be able to challenge himself to pick up, where adults get to the point where their mind and will is not receptive to receive. So... In hard times, if you want to see what hard times is, when you get into a workout and you're sweating, and your muscles are hurting, you, it gives you an opportunity to think, well, I can't do it anymore. But when you see that little boy work out, if, if he's in the tape, it's like yeah. he's having so much fun. Even though he feels uncoordinated, he's not picking up, you know, he's not along with the crowd, some of the moves, but he didn't give up. He don't, yeah. his, his mind and will kept him going. Oh. <laughs> but as an adult, an adult would see it and say, feel like they're uncoordinated and they would, can't keep up, they walk out. Yeah. And I always say, well, how do you even get to God's word? When you first start off, you don't really get it right away. Yeah, come and, on. And even, and even when you, even when you've been in it for a long time, you still don't get it until, you know, you you, you get it and get it as you grow and grow and grow. So Amen. to me, it's one of the same. And I always say, if you can give your own, your own eyes, see, say, walk by faith, not by not sight. Not by sight. But if you can give your own eyes a chance to see what you what you can accomplish through the will 
of God in your own will put together, you, you know can what? overcome what, a lot. Let me just let me rephrase something you said. You you were you were drawing an analogy of what Andre saying just a moment ago. Everything you need is in the house. Right. So what you're saying is everything that we need to be fit is in the house. We just have to get it out. And you gotta walk. Yeah, you gotta walk. You, you have to walk it. You gotta walk before you run. You gotta and you but, gotta run. But you gotta walk it. You gotta act. Yeah. Walk by faith means the walk of it is the action of the unseen evidence. Yeah. And getting in shape is unseen until it happens. But the manifestation starts when you start. You know what? So. Most of the time when a minister is up ministering, uh, we have this term in the church called preaching to the choir. Where this, this message brings a whole new meaning to preaching to the choir, doesn't it? And everyone said amen. Y'all still love me, don't you? Okay. Um, let's go to the videotape. This was uh, Cody, hi baby, and me uh, yesterday. And uh, take a look at the World Training Center right there in Ventura Boulevard. Okay, you're ready. There is no way to experience Thai bow unless you actually come here. Billy Blanks, you know, this is almost like a fitness evangelist or something like that you know I couldn't go another guest appearance with Billy Blanks without actually coming and experiencing this for myself Billy is passionate about the concept of fitness I mean this is like this is like being at you know almost like it's like being at a church service I mean look Look at what his motto is, walk by faith and not by sight. So ultimately what I had to do is I couldn't possibly have one more time where Billy was with me on the Praise the Lord program without coming because every time I did, I would say, you know what, I need to come by and see what you're doing. So this is mine, this is Cody, and this is our first time here. We're right on Ventura Boulevard here. Uh, in Sherman Oaks at the Billy Blanks World Training Center and uh, I'm gonna enjoy myself I'm gonna sweat a little bit and get into Tybo right here at the World Training Center right here in Sherman Oaks California here we go Okay, I give. Your first time, no way are you going through a whole class, okay? No way are you going through. So I give. The rest of these tough individuals will continue doing their class. So we've got exercise, we've got kind of kickboxing, you've got some, you know, regular boxing, you've got some taekwondo in here, and you have, you know, charismatic church all kind of wrapped into one big thing. Do you think this is God's gift to you to teach people fitness? Oh, I know it's God's gift to me to teach people fitness. I believe God gives me the opportunity to, to do this, to minister to people's hearts. You see how everybody follows what I'm doing? It gives me an opportunity now to step in and also show them what God has in store, God's glory and everything. When you see the trees, you see the sky, you see the earth, you see all of God's glory. So this is God's glory. I'm in here doing what God gave me the opportunity to do in life. Love you, man. Thank you. Ty Bo and the sweat is real. You know, Billy is almost like a minister of fitness, and uh, what he does here uh, really can only be felt. It's something, the enthusiasm that he creates is awesome, and I think that one of the mottos back here on the back wall, walk by faith, not by sight. And uh, by faith, not only can we uh, be fit and, uh, you know, in shape and all the things, because, man, I mean, the, the, what he has the ability, and I believe the anointing to do, is show you how to walk by faith, but you don't do a whole lot of walking. You do bouncing and kicking and punching and all that. So really, it should be like kick, fight, punch, twist, spin, go on your hands, do everything by faith, not by sight. And you do it a lot till you sweat. Okay, 
Billy Blanks, World Training Center, right here on Ventura. is awesome. Come visit sometime. It's cool. Awesome. And uh, what an incredible setup for what God has put inside of you. To, for you to sing right before coming up here, everything you need is in the house. And that's, that's what I believe about what is God has put inside of you. Now, what about this little guy? Did he do pretty good? He did awesome. He, he was, did all right? He was really awesome in the class. <clears throat> show, me one of the, show me one of those little kicks. Just, just kind of snap one of those kicks up there. There you go. Oh, one more. One more. One more. Okay, one more. The camera was... Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Love it. Awesome. Yeah, right. Okay, where's God going to take you and where does all this... How do we get the message? How do we get people to respond and to get their temples in shape? How do we do that? So, talk to them. Well, I, I just think one of the most important things, especially believers and people who who not believers, people who want to get themselves in good shape, there's an opportunity for you to be able to do that, but you have to understand there's... There's two parts to you. You got three parts. That you have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a mind. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell people you have a body. And I, and I say, listen, in order for you to get yourself in good shape, it takes the mind and the will. If you're on, God is on this side, Satan's on this side, and there's a straight line, you in the middle. If you, if, you don't, if you don't go to God's side, if you don't go to Satan's side, you stand in the middle, what do you get? You get nothing. nothing. So then if you get nothing, if you stand in the middle, then why do people always blame Satan for not getting to where they need to go? <laughs> Okay. So, come on. So uh, uh, all I'm saying is, if, if uh, all I'm saying, if, if 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 everything is, if a million miles along, God has a million miles for you, and Satan has a million miles for you, but you stay in the middle, how do you get anywhere? Yeah. Then why do people blame Satan? Ooh. They blame Satan for Ooh. doing what he does, and Satan can't do anything unless you step left or right. Come on. Right. So. So. <laughs> so I use that. I use that message for physical fitness, and I believe that you know God has a lot of goodness on His side, and especially for young youth out there. When you see a young youth, he works at McDonald's to make a 4.50 an hour, right? He's on God's side. On this side, spiritually wise, that's good, but his eyes, his senses, don't see the goodness of what God has in store for him. But then he got a friend over here that's, that's working for Satan, making two thousand dollars an hour. Now, to his eyes, that looks good, mm. but but it's not good. But it tempts him to go over there. So all of a sudden, it starts to tempt him to go to that side. And when he starts to go to that side, he decides, he sees down the road that it's not good. I'm going back to God's side, right? So he, he walks back to God's side. And then what happens to believers and happens to everybody around the world, when he starts to walk back to God's side, all of a sudden, that side that he did over there in the past, starts to follow him. It crosses the street and comes over to God's side. And then it starts to tell him, you're not worthy. It makes you feel like, even though... Christ loves you, what you did over there tells you that you're not, you're not worried. Your past comes and haunts you all the time. It starts to walk and right behind you. And all of a sudden, it's calling your name. All of a sudden, your eyes start to do this. The next thing you know, he calls you at the right time, and you're turned, and he grabs you. Amen. And then he starts to pull you back on the other side. And as he starts to pull you back on the other side, the word that God has put inside you gives you not enough power to pull you back. But the hindrance, in, uh, the hindrance of your past People, believers, got to understand, it always follows you. Mm. But if you give into it and believe what your past has done, you're never going to make it to where God yeah. wants you to make That's it. That's right. Well, well, the same thing happens. The same thing happens when you do physical fitness. When you go, I always ask people, how many times have you went bankrupt in a workout? <laughs> how many times have you tried all different kind of workouts and none of them ever worked for you? Yeah. You know why? You know why they haven't worked? Because everybody's looking to change the outside. You can't change the outside until you change what Jesus said. You gotta change. Amen. You gotta change your mind. Wow. And when you, and when you start changing your mind and your will, all of a sudden you start to see your outside start to change. Amen. And you start to see different things happen for you. And to me, that's what I believe God has given me. I go all over the world. Mm. I'm tied both in 100 countries and 33 different languages. And God has given me the opportunity to speak to all types of people and, all, and, and, and people who are not believers and giving them opportunity. At the end of this, I'll call it service, I teach yeah. class. Amen. At the end of my class, I call for people to come to Christ. Amen. You know? and, and, Amen. And at that time, at that, for me, at that time. Amen. And, and, and at that time, to me, at the, they at their hardest time, they just went through a good physical, spiritual workout. And at that time, they at their most...
powerful time. Amen. And then if I can give them an the opportunity to see what Christ has done through me, because I'm walking the walk. In the walk how does that happen? How, do it. Do it right there into that camera right now. How do you. How do you do it in a Taibo class? There could be people watching right now. Just invite them to the Lord right now. I, I say right now for everybody that's out there that's watching, maybe don't know who Christ is, and you really want to get to the top. You really want to go somewhere which you never thought you could do. All you have to do is get on your knees and ask Jesus to come into your life and watch and see what happens. Your life will change, but it won't change overnight. It'll change in time. It'll change in you going through things and, and, and believing and believing and knowing that he cares for all that you do. So when it comes to just not even physical fitness, just believing, and you want to make it somewhere, try Jesus. Because Jesus does not the possible. He does the impossible. And to me, that's awesome. And that's, that's what I am. Okay. Now... One of two things, okay? Let me let me rephrase something you said. You you were drawing an analogy. If you just tuned in, this is the Praise the Lord program. My uh, giant guest here is uh, Billy Blanks, and uh, put the uh, address for the World Training Center up there on the screen. I want to just right there, one four seven zero eight Ventura Boulevard. For those in the Southern California area, or if you're visiting the Southern California area. That's very near, basically, the 405 freeway intersection with the 101 freeway intersection. That's roughly where it is in the uh, San Fernando Valley. Everyone, ultimately, in Los Angeles knows where Ventura Boulevard is. And uh, what I uh, heard you say, and what I want to uh, kind of revisit for a moment, is you were, you were kind of calling us here in the middle. And God's direction is this way, and Satan's direction is this way. And so we're here in the middle. All we have to do is just start walk, walking towards God, start going towards him in right. physical fitness. But what was so interesting is then Satan is just an excuse. That's right. Is that right? Is it's that what you were saying? For a it's lot an of excuse. People. Yes. They want so, to blame. so ultimately, the only one to blame is yourself. That's right. That's and right. so God can change you on the inside. And then just walking towards him and towards physical fitness and we'll not change. seeing it as a task will change the outside. Got you. Is that how it, it works? It has to. It has to. It has to. It has to. Okay. okay. Go ahead. What? Now, I have somebody I want to I want to bring down that could tell you how it happened. Hey, Debbie, could you come down? Come on down. This is the uh, the uh, uh, praise the the surprise praise the Lord program. <laughs> this is a testimony of fitness. I believe that God. You know, I believe God. God can talk through her, and it can help a lot of people in this room. Because, okay. And it's I mean, about fitness. It's about She's fitness. not like going to preach some other no, message. No, it's okay, about fitness. On. Okay, run up here real quick. Do you speak a foreign language by any chance? Okay. Tell tell us what fitness did for you. Okay. Um, I had had a back injury, and um, I was paralyzed from the waist down, and I was at the peak of my career. I was a nurse, silly, <laughs> and um, I was had had three back surgeries, all of which failed. And um, I was um, waiting. For, they wanted to take me back and put rods in my back and all the thing. They didn't even give me any. Um, they didn't exactly. They said. This is just, well, we're going to try it and see if it can stabilize you. And I saw the infomercials <laughs> and um, about three times. And, and then, but it was um, in his eyes, I saw love and the things that he was saying. So I ordered the tapes, not because I thought I was going to be able to do anything, but something spoke to me. I was not, I didn't know the Lord barely knew the Lord, I was, and um, so I over ordered the tapes and um, just laid it there in the bed and watched the tapes, listening to everything he said, started trying to move my arms, and because um, I, I was a shut-in, and uh, here I am. <laughs> do you, now let me say something. Do you actually do Tai? I mean, you can you can do the whole thing and do the. I do I do Tai Bo um, um, two or three times a day, and I do karate, and I weight train, and um, I'm an orange belt now. You're you've been healed then, obviously. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Stay right here. Okay. 
just just show everybody one of those moves that you guys do in the Tai Bo thing. Just just a little bit of of stuff now. Come on. <laughs> but you, you know what the, one of the most important things about the whole thing? She opened up her Bible again. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's she awesome. opened it. I was really angry with God because I, I couldn't believe it. I thought, you know, why did you let this happen to me? You know. Um, so that you could be on this program testifying that you're through it. That's easy. I kind of feel like Benny Hinn up here for a second. I, I was gonna, I was gonna like throw my coat on that lady for a second. <laughs> Love you, Benny. Um, okay, last word. Physical fitness is it for everybody? Physical fitness is for everybody. It gives them a chance to really test themselves as a person. I think that's the key. It, it, what people have to start realizing, the physical fitness is a way for them to learn how to communicate with their own bodies. Amen. And not let anybody else tell you what your body can do. Can you imagine somebody telling you what your body can do and you don't even know yourself? Wow. So the word of the Lord tonight is that everything you need is in the in house. house. Right here, right. in the house. Awesome. Let's thank Billy Blanks for being with us tonight. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Amen. The Minister of Fitness. So, you guys okay? You guys are awesome. Now, there's a new rule. Every time I host, you have to be here, okay? That's the new rule. Amen. Are you guys ready to sing again? You get ready to do it? You guys, uh, this is going to be an incredible Praise the Lord program. If you just tuned in. Uh, I know this looks a little different. Lovey, come here. Uh, but this is really just the Praise the Lord program coming to you worldwide. If you just tuned in, Andre and Sandra are going to be with us. They're going to get into some music. You want to go for a while this time? You want to you wanna really go for a while? You know what? We're going to see what the Lord says, okay? In a moment, uh, after Andre is done, we're going to give the microphone. I'm going to toss it to uh, Robert Kayanja. Robert, are you here? You ready? Mom. You ready to go for it? And uh, just fasten your seatbelt because uh, Robert Kayanja is going to be uh, speaking in just a moment. Isn't this fun? Something is going on around here. Amen. I just have a feeling down in the tip of my toes that God's getting ready to do something massive. You know, there's just times that God wants your attention. Amen. And there's just some times that He will arrange your life to get your attention and I think America has come to a place where God wants their attention Amen. and I know that what's going to be spoken here tonight is going to set you free Amen. completely free so stay tuned I love you all thank you for thank you here. for coming we've got the greatest people out in the hallways and stuff God bless you everybody thanks can come for, on in thanks for coming you guys sing Fine. Let me uh, let me just say that uh, real quickly. I just wanted to mention that a little bit later in the program, our pastor, uh, Pastor Gary Zamora. Uh, let me just tell you one of the quickest, most incredible stories. Pastor Kayanja, come here real quick. He was on with Lori and I. I had never met Pastor Robert Kayanja, and he was on the Praise the Lord program. I fell in love with this guy yes, just did. immediately. He's precious. Okay, <laughs> and ultimately, what happened was. I invited Pastor Robert Kionja to come back to Southern California. He had to leave after being with us on a Thursday night a few, three weeks ago or so. And one of the most incredible things happened. We got together, and I wanted to do a document. How many realize the president and first lady of Uganda are believers in, in the Lord Jesus? Okay, that's a big deal, okay? President, first lady of Pastor Robert. But guess who was in power a few years ago? Remember? Idi Amin. Okay, from a man that during his regime is an estimated slaughtering of 300,000 people during his regime to a president that calls upon the name of the Lord, okay, is a big deal. So you came and, and we were shooting and I was interviewing you about your country. 
Well, my pastor, Pastor Gary Zamora, jump up here real quick, Pastor, came and I wasn't quite ready. Both of you stand over here. I wasn't quite ready to, to do the, the videotaping. And now listen to this, you guys. I promise you this happened. I took both of them and took them upstairs and said, you guys need to just talk amongst yourself. I've got to go downstairs and set up the TV equipment. My pastor immediately turns to Robert Kayanja and starts prophesying the word of the Lord. Okay, you ready for this? This is, this is okay, no kidding, okay? Pastor says to him, I can see in the spirit the inside of your church. And I see that there's no lights up in the ceiling. Like here in the studio, there's so many lights up in the studio, up in the ceiling. And he said, I see there's no lights. And God's going to give you lighting. And in fact, he's going to give you television equipment. I see one, two, three TV cameras. And then, okay, folks, my pastor hears my mom's voice in a spirit saying something about TV equipment. Pastor Gary says to Robert, maybe today. Okay, how many know that when you prophesy and you say maybe today, you better had heard from the Lord, okay? Because you're going to be run out of town on a rail real soon, okay? If you're like, okay, the, he said to him, did, is that true? Exactly. Okay. Is that true? Exactly. Right. Okay. I knew I knew a story. I'm just confirming it, okay? Now, I get a call from my dad's secretary. They don't know that we're shooting, or that was not on an agenda. My dad hears that you're here in Southern California. He says, please bring Robert Kayanjo over for behind the scenes, maybe two and a half weeks ago. You sit down with my dad. My mom, ready, walks into the studio right at the end of behind the scenes. Gary and I are standing over here. We're not involved. She walks in, and the first thing that she says, I promise you, the first thing she says, without me talking to her about it, I didn't even know he had said that. I, they were upstairs, and I was downstairs. I didn't even know that, they had ha that that entire story had happened. My mom walks in and says to my dad, this is Robert Kayanja that I was telling you about from Uganda. We need to buy him some television equipment. Okay? I'm sitting there when it's happening. Now, what was so funny is it was... No, it, it was neat, but not that impacting to me, Andre. I didn't know that he had prophesied to him. So, I mean, Gary's going, you know, just shocked, and so is Robert, but I'm just going, wow, that's cool, you know, I mean, I don't know until we get upstairs. Now, listen, there was an African, the Trinity Broadcasting Network of Africa, TBA, Trinity Broadcasting of Africa, just happened to be having a board meeting upstairs. Just happened to, okay? Just happened to be having a board meeting. And we go upstairs. It gets passed, uh, and my dad brings up. This is Robert Conge, everybody on the board. And uh, Jan has suggested that we buy his church some equipment. And, uh, and I say, now I have been filled in on the story. So I'm freaking out. And I go, uh, Dad, you're going to have to decide how many cameras to order in this thing. And he goes, well, I think you ought to have three. Okay? <laughs> That was put into the board minutes, and I have a transcript right here from the Trinity Broadcasting Network Vice President of Engineering that says, uh, you know, that we are determining. Here, there's, there's a picture of your TV equipment right there, Pastor Conjure. There it is. It's, uh, it's being created, and it's happening. I mean, there's a picture of the switcher. Okay, look here. Look here. Uh, let me just look down this invoice um, because I can probably pick out. There they are, right there. Okay, somebody, uh, Minicam, come over here real quick. Let me just put my finger right there. That says right here, quantity, and, and we're ordering this equipment. We're ordering it from Video Telecom, right there. Hold still, Ron. I'm going to move it. Video Telecom, right there. Okay, that's a company. Here's the invoice, and zoom right into my finger right there. That says right there, three. DXC digital 35P Sony CCD ca camera head, three of them. There's the invoice right there, okay? That is on order and is going to Uganda. Now, isn't that incredible?
coming to Uganda next month. Exactly. And we would like to, if, is the equipment going to be ready? We'd to like to it bring there. it with us. And since people have heard that we were going to Uganda, I've had doctors come. They're sending medical supplies for all of your wow. clinics. Wow. We are taking toys and all kinds of stuff over there. We're going to have one time wow. in Uganda, so we're so excited about it. Cool. Now, you're going to be preaching here in just a moment. We're going to give uh, this over. Let me just, without the lights, this is just the video. Okay, TBN family, here, come on, come over. Thank you. Because of your love and support, here's an invoice for $141,600 for equipment that's going to Kampala, Uganda. And it's going, and it's going to be stewarded over by this man right here. The lights and everything are a completely different company, and uh, it's going to happen. Those that support during the telethons make a way for this type of thing to happen. Okay, when you give to Trinity Broadcasting Network at a telethon, you don't know sometimes that there's going to be a prophet who's going to say, you're going to have TV equipment, maybe today, and then here's my mom's voice, and then she comes in here and says, Paul, hun, we need to buy this guy some TV equipment. And guess what? The funds were available because of their love and support all around the world for Uganda. It's awesome, my friend. Okay, Andre, you guys take it away. Prophesy. Do whatever you want to do. And uh, at the end, when your guys are done in a few minutes, we're going to give it to, uh, to Robert Kayanja, and he's going to preach. Those watching around the world, stay tuned. Uh, this is an incredible Praise the Lord program. And we want to say thank you to Andre and Sonda specifically for bringing this entire crew. We love you guys. Love you very much. Thank you for being with us. Are you having a good time tonight? Beautiful time. We okay, sing like crazy. Here we go. Go for it. We thank God for what he's doing today. And I think every church that has had a vision craves a real move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are praying, even in our church, that the Lord would do something unusual. When you've been in church all of your life, you've seen many things happen, and you've seen miracles, you've seen things that were a real move of the Spirit, and somehow, as, as time has gone by, Many of our relationships with God have, has gotten diluted. But God wants to restore that. He wants to restore that to the churches. Hallelujah. He wants to restore that in your own individual lives. That you'll have a craving for him once again. And we're praying this in our church. That God will do something special. God will do something new. Even if he has to uproot things that have been planted. Sometimes we've got ancient spirits that hover over our churches. And old traditional things that we have held on to and we don't want to let go. But God in this day wants to do a new thing. You've heard that before. But we're craving for that. Sister Sandra wants to just share something. We're going to sing a song for you. We're so delighted to live in this day and this time and this hour because we are people of purpose, people of destiny, and God has singled us out for this last day. He has called us out of all kind of stuff, all kind of mess, all kind of tradition for this day, for this revival. You know, Pastor Roger and I, we pastor a wonderful church. Our, our parents found it, and we're so delighted to be there. And but when, Right now we are. But when God called my brother, we did not know what God was doing. But when he calls you, and you might not feel that you are equipped for the purpose, but when God calls you, the moment he calls you, he puts what you need in your being. And I found it to be awesome that they're going to be, we're going to be talking about the anointing because the anointing lifts burdens and it destroys the yoke. 
And if you're going to your church right now, and if you go in and go out and you're not being lifted and things aren't being destroyed, you need to get down on your knees and say, Father, I seek your face. Seek the face of the Lord. He said, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. We did not know what to do. Many times you might be pastors in your church and you don't know what program or what you look at television. You, you see TBN and you say, maybe I should try that. Maybe I should be a purpose-driven church. But if you get down on your knees and begin to listen to the voice of God, he says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not obey. And listen to the voice of God and God will give you a strategy for your church. God will give you a strategy, a revival for your church, for your day, for your time, for this season. We did not know what to do. You said, well, this is the first of the year. We should have a leadership meeting. God said, pray. But, we, but the people need to know what we're going to do. God said, pray. But everybody's waiting to know what to do. God said, pray. So we begin to pray. And we got down on our knees and we lay down and we, we have been on a, a 30 day fast, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Fasting and seeking the Lord's face. And we've seen healings take place. We've seen deliverance take place. God said, if you pray and seek my face, hallelujah, programs are out. Another program is over. It's time to seek the face of God. Seek the heart of God. He has an answer for you, pastors. He doesn't want us to be struggling because God has the answer. And we are so happy we are in revival. We are praying. This coming Friday night, we are going to be praying all night long. See, when you're in the world, you partied all night long. God said, if you spend all night with me, watch what I will do in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. So we invite you to come. We, we don't have a program per se, but we are seeking the heart of God. This is revival time, and the Lord has brought all kinds of people to our ministry, and we have different nationalities represented. It's not about different nationalities. It's about the purpose of God. And the, 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 the pastor wrote a song. It says, like a rushing of a mighty wind. Come and feel my heart again. God wants to come in and flow through the churches. God wants to flow, come and flow through our community. God wants to come in and break curses and destroy the oath for the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is for deliverance. The anointing of the Lord is to destroy oath. Hallelujah. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. Revival is in the land. Revival is in the land. Hallelujah. God wants to do something. And he's waiting on you. God wants to do something. He's calling you. God wants to do something. He needs you. Young man, old man, black man, white man, rich man, poor man. God is calling on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of a mighty wind, come and fill our 
hearts again like the rushing of a mighty wind. The rushing of a mighty wind. A mighty wind. Like the rushing of a mighty wind. Of a mighty wind. Come and fill Come and fill our hearts. hearts again. Again. Like the like rushing of a mind. Like a river, like a river that has overflowed, like a river that has overflowed, and it's overflowed. Come and feel, come and feel our hearts. As you sin, your spirit down, just to revive your, to revive your church again, coming like the rushing of a mighty wind, go like the rushing. If you want revival, come and fill our hearts. Come and fill our hearts. Stand to your feet. Can I get a witness? Do you want God to do something great? Of a mind to it.
Come on, somebody, clap your hands to Jesus, wherever you are. Just get ready for the Holy Ghost. I take it as a privilege. I want to thank God for the relationship God has brought between myself and Matt and his family. But above all, I want to thank God for Dr. Paul and Mama Jane Crouch. I tell you, I've walked with people who have got the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I've come closer to them and I've, I've moved with them. I remember for over 10 years we worked hand in hand with the late Daisy Osborne. One of the matriarch of faith who cross, crisscrossed African continent to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ with her dear husband, Dr. T.L. But the same anointing that was upon Daisy whenever she began to walk to presidents who were non-believers and prophesied to them and demands that she needed uh, grounds for crusades. It's the same anointing that I saw on that day with, with, with Mama Jane Crouch. Uh, you could see the eyes of Jesus in her sockets. And, and I, I thank God for the anointing of God upon our life and, and Dr. Crouch for for the desire that God has given them to take the gospel around the world. Thank God for TBN. Somebody clap your hands for TBN. We are, we are so grateful. Africa, we salute you. Uganda, we salute you. God is doing a wonderful thing. I tell you, it's exciting. I have so many things to share tonight, but I just want to go into the word of God. Bishop Crouch sang that song. He said, like a mighty wind. I tell you, it's, it's the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. amen. I, I want you, if you're here in this room, I know you are watching by television, get ready for your miracle. But if you are, but if you are in, your, in this room and, and you've got any illness or tumors in your breast or, or blind, in blindness in your eye or deafness, I just want you to slip down of those steps and just get closer here and just sit down on this carpet because the flow of the Holy Ghost is going to move in this place in the next seven minutes. And uh, like my sister over there with the hand thing on your hand, just walk down here, the place. God is going to do, don't be intimidated. God brought you here for a reason. And I tell you, God is going to do tre tremendous things. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 7, I just want to go quickly, briefly there. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 7, in verse 11, it is a wonderful story of a widow woman who had lost her son. This is what the Bible says. Now it happened the day after that he went to the city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and he was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. And he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. Then fear came upon all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. Today, God is going to visit you. This is a story of hope. Somebody say hope. hope. This is a story of faith. Somebody say faith. faith. This is a story of miracles. Somebody say miracles. Miracle. The Bible has given us a story that Jesus was going to the city called Nain. Nain is a city south of Nazareth. It's, a, it's, it's known as a tower in Hebrew. It's known as a city of people who are hanging out to watch and see what is going to take place. What is going to happen. Well, what happened was that this was a widow, which means her husband had died. Now, her son also had died. 
Now, if you know anything about Jewish custom at that time, a man meant everything to you. A man was your security. A man was your everything. You remember when Jesus Christ was on the cross, he turned to his young brother, John, and he said, John, that is your mama. Mama, that is your son. In other words, I'm going away. You take care of mama. You remember the, yeah. You remember the story of a woman who had seven husbands, six husbands, and the one she had was not even her husband. Well, you can say that that woman was promiscuous, but not. According to their custom, you needed a man to give you security. You couldn't do it on your own. That's why she could get married to a man who was not even her husband. And her job was to fetch water many miles to go to the, wall, to the well of Jacob and back to Samaria. So she wasn't as a promiscuous as most people would think. This woman needed security. She needed somebody over her life. And that was the order of the day. And, and so this woman was a widow, which means that she was going to go through what everybody woman was going to go through. Her own security, her first security, her husband died. Now the second man who was in her life was also dead. That's why she was crying. She wasn't crying because she was a stranger to death. She had already had it in her family. She already knew what was happening. The, the situation she was weeping, that she was going to be treated like any other woman on the face of the earth. Her hope was gone. Her hope was finished. And that was the end of it. But listen to this. Then Jesus comes to the city at the right time. On September 11th, we began to see coffins, especially in the World Trade Center. Many people in New York area died. And it seems that it seemed the devil was winning. It seemed that death was winning. But something great is about to happen in this great country of the United States. I just feel it in my spirit in Jesus' name. Now, what happened was Jesus comes at the same time. Now, every death procession is followed with a song. So they were singing a death song out of Nain. And Jesus is coming with a, ma a large multitude of people entering the city. The devil is always very, very funny. He chooses a moment when God is about to visit you to strike you so that you may turn your eyes from God. He chooses a moment whereby your, your eyes is receptive to hear the word of God. That's when he is striking your family so that you will be busy by taking care of what you're not supposed to take care of. So what happened was now this procession is singing. And then the large multitude with Jesus is coming singing, see what the Lord has done. And both, and both group of people met each other. Tonight, your funeral songs are going to sing the, meet the songs of praise. Your misery is going to meet the miracle worker. Your trouble is going to meet the troublemaker. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. So they met. And when they met, Jesus looked at the woman. And the first thing he said to her, he said, weep not. You see, nobody can weep away your tears except Jesus Christ. Other people may pity you, but it's only Jesus who can remove your tears. So Jesus said to this woman, he said, stop weeping. And immediately she stopped weeping. They are carrying a young man in an open coffin. Now, the Jewish people have got some similarities, maybe because they hung around Africa for so long, like Africans. In Africa, it is some similarities. When, when someone dies, especially where I come from, now we're trying to change it. They will come home and accuse the woman, the wife, for killing her loved one, her, 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 their, their in-laws. They will come and say, you've killed your husband. And oftentimes they'll beat you up. In fact, in Africa, they attend your funeral in your own clothes. The uncles and the relatives will come home when you are dead and they'll say, can I have a coat? Can I have a jacket? Can I have this? And so they attend your funeral in, the, in your own clothes. That's why when people die, we still have the problems of millions and millions of orphans because the in-laws come and ransack the whole home. The Jewish people used to do the same. 
Jesus was still hanging on the cross, not yet dead, and they took his clothes. So Jesus, the woman was crying because they had taken everything from the house. Now in Africa, I tell the women everywhere I preach, before you cry for your dead husband, lock up the house. So now, these people with a death procession are coming out and they meet Jesus. And Jesus said to the woman, he said, weep not. And he did not stop the death procession. They simply stopped. You see, whatever was tarring, carrying you to the grave, tonight is going to stop. If it was cancer, it is going to stop. If it was AIDS, it's going to stop. If it was destruction, it is going to stop. In Jesus' name. So they stopped. And the Bible said Jesus stretched out his hand and touched the coffin. I was asking myself, the coffin wasn't dead. Why didn't Jesus touch the dead body? Because Jesus does not deal with root, fruits. He always deals with roots. You are not yet dead until you are in a coffin. It seems that this coffin was like a container containing this young man. Something that has been containing your life. Jesus is about to stretch his hand and touch you. I want to use a subject tonight when Jesus touches your coffin. The Bible says he stretched out his hand. To stretch means to go out of your way. There were people between Jesus and that open coffin. And it seems that every time Jesus tries to come to you for your miracle, somebody in between comes there. Some, some devils come in there. Some situation come there. But the Bible says he stretched his hand. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Come on, somebody. Oh, you, you, no, no, no. You can't do better than that. Say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where Jesus is. But I know where you are. He will stretch his hand tonight and touch you in your home you in your house. He will touch you in your prisons. He will touch you wherever you are. And the Bible said, he touched the open coffin. And then he said to the young man who was dead, arise. And the Bible said, the young man shut up. Now, if the dead can hear him, the living should obey him. If the dead can hear him, the living should obey him. The Bible said the young man shut up and he began to speak. Now you've been dead for three days. What are you talking about? Was he telling them about how big the demons are in hell? No. Because he was in an open coffin. And he was on a higher elevation. When he looked around, somebody was putting on his shoes. Somebody was wearing his jacket. And when he looked around, he began to say, who gave you my jacket? You see, when Jesus touches your coffin, you begin to claim back whatever the devil has taken from you. You begin to say, the devil, who gave you my jacket? Who gave you my country? Who gave you my nation? You see, you don't understand. It's the same thing that happened to us in Uganda. We had a man like Idi Amin. But when Jesus touched our death, when Jesus stretched out his hand and touched Uganda, we begin to claim the country. From the president to the lowest person. Somebody shout hallelujah.
Strap your hand. Say, devil, who gave you my country? That is exactly what I feel tonight. We are taking back America in Jesus' name. You are taking back your health. You are taking back your life in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come here, my sister. Yes, come here, come here, come here. Come here, all of you. Come here quickly. All of you standing over there. What's happening to you? I just had carpal tunnel surgery, and I don't have the full feeling back in my index finger yet. You do? You don't? don't. Put your hand in my hand. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You see, Jesus is stretching out his hand. Between me and you, there is Jesus Christ. Be healed in Jesus' name. Tell me what do you feel? Thank you, Jesus. What do you feel? I can feel your hand. You can feel my hand. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, God is so good. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What's your name? What's your name? Donna Crockett. You're trying to gather yourself. Thank you, Jesus. What do you feel? What's happening? Um, I get seizures after falling down. Uh, those are where 24 years ago. I fell down and I started getting seizures, which medically was named ep epileptic seizures. Go. In Jesus' name. Never come back again. Mama, what's happening? I have 10 potentially fatal diseases. Uh -huh. I have lupus, arthritis, and numerous different... Lift up your hand. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Touch my coffin. Touch my coffin. Do you know that the day you were born, your coffin was made? When you put on weight, it puts on weight. When you grow taller, it grows taller. It is only Jesus who can stop it. What's happening to you? I have um, two problems. One, I had a complete hysterectomy years uh -huh. ago, and I uh -huh. suffer really bad with hot flashes where I feel like I can't even breathe. It, my face is just burning, burning. And then another problem is I have really bad injury in my neck, and uh -huh. the doctor said I need surgery. Lift up your hand. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for my healing. In Jesus' name. What's happening? Um, I have a boyfriend that used to be in a gang. He got saved in May of 99. And the devil's been trying to attack him, trying to bring him back to his old ways. So he's been wanting to prepare for that. Say, so Jesus, thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. What's happening? Um, well, I thank God for me because I almost no, what's died. What's happening with you? Um, well, I need prayer for me because my temper, because I used to be in a gang. God set me free. Um, I got lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Say, thank you, Jesus, for my freedom. I am free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, ma'am. nervous condition now. I can't sleep nights. Will you pray for me? And I itch so on my skin. It's just so bad. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, what's happening? I was, uh, I was born blind in my right eye. You were born blind in your right eye. This is the eye. Close your eye. Come on, stretch out your hand to this man. Ha. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Say, Jesus, touch his coffin. You blind spirit, I command you to leave this man. I, blind eyes were made to see. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blind spirit never come back again. Father, thank you. The blind spirit is gone. Now come upon this man and open his eye. Since he was born, he's using one eye. That is illegal in the kingdom of God. Lord, we command his eyes open now in Jesus' name. Someone, somebody clap your hands to Jesus. Let eye open in Jesus' name. 
for the glory of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Open this eye. Open this eye. Whatever you see, follow it with your eye. Come on, somebody lift up your hand and begin to praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Receive what God has for you. Oh, come on, somebody clap your hands to Jesus. Praise his name. Let him do what he wants to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Receive what God Thank has you, Jesus. for you. Thank you, Jesus. Stop the struggle. Thank you, Jesus. Stop the fight. You get to count your fingers. And receive God has stop the struggle, stop the fire, and receive. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on, somebody, begin to praise the name of the Lord. Begin to praise the name of the Lord. Hey. Hit that man over here, please. What's happening with you? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Be healed. Let every tumor leave your breast. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody clap your hands to Jesus. Now, those of you who are watching right now at home, I tell you what God is doing for everybody here, He can do for you. What God is doing for everyone, He can do for you. I want you to touch where you feel the pain. Whether you have a tumor, whether you have blindness or deafness, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I just want you to touch where you feel the pain and receive from the Lord. Lord, we rebuke every sickness, every disease. We command every pain and every paralysis to leave. This is the day you are touching every coffin. You are touching and resurrecting our young people. You are touching every marriage. You are healing, you are restoring ministers back in their ministries. You are visiting them and you are touching them in Jesus' mighty name. By the power of the Holy Ghost. And in Jesus' name, Father, I pray for the finances and the economy of the United States. I pray, my Father, that you touch the stock market and you touch every church and every ministry, especially the partners of TBN, the those who are giving so that equipment will be given across Africa and across the world. I pray that you bless your people in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Receive what God has. Receive what God has. Stop the struggle. Stop the struggle. Stop the fight. Stop the struggle.
has promised you is yours. Have you received since you believe? Receive what God had for you. Stop the struggle. Stop the fight. And receive what God had for you. I want Jah's ja word to come up. This is a young man that We heard his ministry. He's out of San Diego. A lot of people have listened to rap music and they 
they say they don't understand it, but you'll understand Jah word. Amen. He loves God and he has a special anointing. He's a humble man. We'd like to just introduce him to the TBN family. We call him and his, he goes by Jah word. God bless you, Pastor. need for entertainment. The world does not need to be duped with your enthusiasm. The world needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. People are dying. People, our men are, are being strangled by pornography. Our women are entangled with, with prostitution. Our young men are killing, their, killing each other over colors. And we want to give them a bunch of this and that. Give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Give them the pure gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that can save them. Brothers, please. The only thing that they need is Jesus. Let us stop playing games with God's people. 
what God has to offer you is free. He doesn't need your money. All he needs is your heart to open up to him. He wants to come in and change your life and free you from the bondage of sin. All you have to do is confess, open up your heart, and ask the Lord Jesus to come into your life. That's all he needs from you is a willing heart. Strictly ministry, God's people. Let's give the world what they need, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Strictly ministry, your word. It ain't up to me. Strictly ministry. Come on. Strictly ministry. Come on. It ain't about me. Gotta tell the world. Wow. You know what? Uh, let me take. Let me. Let me excite you with something. Are you ready for this? At our church, uh, Pastor Gary, just come stand with me real quick. Let me just say this to you. February 9th, uh, just a few uh, Sundays ago, the word of the Lord came over our church, and our church being right there at the Hanna-Barbera building, right on Ventura uh, Boulevard in, in Hollywood. Pastor Gary started to prophetically declare something, and, and, and let me just read to you just a little bit of what the word came in our church on February 9th. Are you ready for this? This is a word to the world. It's a word to the United States. So it's, it's a word to all of us. When you hear the wars, and you will hear and see. When you see the fire, and when you hear the fear, know that I am God. I am reaching into this nation now, and I am pulling up my king, says the Lord. You will see presidents stand and declare my name in length and in detail, says the Spirit of the Lord. And I will give you, in a time of war, a voice of peace, rest, and restoration. This nation and the nations of the earth will call upon my name and say it is God and he alone that will save us and will heal us. Land, sea, and air. Land, sea, and air. In every place they will call upon me. They will know it is the Lord and only God who can justify, who will testify to this earth of the righteousness. Only the Lord makes that judgment. Only the Lord is worthy upon ships, large ships, freighters, aircraft carriers. Listen to them call upon me with trembling hands. Unlike before, I have my chosen in the air, knowing I must trust in you. On the land, in concealment camouflage, they are on their knees behind trees, saying, alone you are worthy. There will be a call from the nations, the governments, and the kingdoms, saying, we must hear from God. We understand this again is the season of the Lord where he will speak through his prophets to the nations. We want to hear what you are saying because God will speak and then God will immediately do. Theaters, television, God is taking these tools of communication. I will trouble your seas with my own hand, says the Lord. I will confuse the weather, says the Spirit of God, to tell you that the seasons are changing. Don't be afraid. Praise me for what I do. The Lord calls the nations to repentance and to worship the living God. What was God saying through you to the nations in this word on Sunday. If God be for us, 
who can be against us. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When God by his own hand puts a man in position to where he's up against the wall, he's the most dangerous creature of God's creation. Because God said, at any time, I know you might call out on my name. And God says, when you call on me, I'm going to show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Amen. Brother Andre, to you, the Spirit of the Lord says, I'm giving you an inheritance to complete the passion of your heart. And the sickness that's just been prevailing in your church, hospitals, death, the Spirit of the Lord says, I'm about to answer you according to your supplication, says the Spirit of the Lord. And the prophetic words you gave just last week, the Spirit of God says, I'm going to answer you. I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to bring it to pass, and I'm going to do a cleansing work in the house that you asked me to do, says the Lord, and confrontation that presides in the house now. The Lord says, I'm going to destroy it, and I'm going to give you the building of my reputation, says the Spirit of God's wonder and God's power, and the grandma that's about to die. God says, I'm going to raise her up by the Spirit of my power. She will live, and she will not die. God's doing something miraculous to the nations of the earth. God is spreading his love like a blanket over the children of his sons and his daughters. God's saying to this generation, I am desiring to embrace you with my passion and my love to let you know that I'm close to you and I'm ready to have an intimate relationship with you. There's a lady back in here, you, right here, you. God says, I know the sorrow of your household. Come here. God says, I'm going to touch you. I'm going to touch you. I'm going to heal the wounds of your house and I'm going to dry up the wound in the lower part of your body and I'm going to cause you not to have to go and get surgery says the spirit of God's wisdom I'm about to touch your mind with the spirit of peace and the spirit of wisdom 16 years ago there was an accident and the spirit of God says from that hour to this hour I am going to restore you says the spirit of God's grace and God's wisdom and I'm going to give you the love of the son that you pray for says the spirit of God that he will live and not die give the Lord praise God is all power at all times. He's all wisdom, all righteous, all true. God is for this nation because we have men and women that are calling upon him and declaring his might, declaring his glory. God is saying the struggle is over. The struggle is over. It's time for this generation to rise up and say Satan has been defeated. God has given us the victory whom the Son has made free. It is free indeed. We are a prophetic generation with the violent appetite to see the kingdom of God demonstrate its wisdom, its glory, its power, and its might. We know that that appetite is fervently set on fire by the Spirit of God, and He's doing something today. God says it's going to rain, and it's going to rain. God says signatures and approvals are yours. You cannot be denied, says the Lord. You cannot be pushed back any further than what I will hold you up and pull you through, says the Spirit of God. Don't. Don't. Don't, don't look short and don't look shallow because I'm telling you the vision that you had. Where's Brother Kayanja? A plane, a plane is going to be given to you, an aircraft. You need it. God says, I'm going to give it to you. And there's a home, there's a, there's a child facility. God says, I'm going to expand that thing, that child facility that's in your heart, in your hands. There's, there's something that exists right now. God says, I'm going to make you an inheritor. God is pouring out an inheritance. And he's going to bless you with a plane. And that children's facility, the Spirit of God says, is yours. I'm giving you that child's facility for the sick will be tended to by my word and those ministering angels that I've shown you. 
They will lay their hands upon the sick. They reside and preside in your congregation. God says, I'm doing it for you. Four days of fasting. Four days of fasting. I heard you on the fourth day. And I answer you. For on the fourth day, I gave you a miracle. I opened up a blind eye, says the Spirit of God's wonder. And I tell you that I'm going to do it again. The youth will cry out and call out my name. They will prophesy my wonders. Because the mantle of your father and of your grandfather have fallen to you, but I've done something different. And I've done something more, says the Lord. But to you, I'm telling you, listen to the youth. For they have made request of you. And as great as the request is, I will answer them according to the word that I put on the inside of you. The facility is granted. And the aircraft is granted. I will give it to you. Give the Lord praise. God is worthy. God is mighty. God is ever prevalent. He's pursuing you with the passion and the wisdom of his life. He's designed you in his image just to show who he is, to raise up his name in all the nations of the earth, to declare, God is my creator and my Lord and my redeemer, and it is the Lord who has established me. Your gifting is unusual. From the day of your conception, a hand was laid upon you and I spoke my word for your destiny concealed in a promise that's who you are I will not allow anyone to deny my call this day is appropriate for this word Lori come here Something God has been designing. Two and a half years of design. Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Nine days I've been designing for you. The promise of God have seemed as though they were in concealment in part. 25% it would seem would come to pass. And the other 75 is concealed somewhere. God said, in the passion of my embrace, to draw you in so closely that you could smell the fragrance of my desire for you. That's where I brought you to. To reveal inside of you a promise that could never be hopeless. A desire that could never be wounded. A mind that could never suffer insanity. To give to you the peace of my wisdom and the glory of my understanding. It is by my anointing and by my power that I have told you, do without payment. Do without recompense. And I will reward you. And to this day, you stand to do exactly that. And I will honor you and I will reward you and give you seed of promise and hope that will come to fruition and maturity. This is the spirit of God's wisdom and God's power. Can you give him praise? Worship is not. God is not. What is God saying to this nation? What is God saying to this generation? I know who you are, and I care about you. The Word says the secret things, they belong to God. But those things which are revealed, they belong to us and to our children. God is revealing to the minds of this generation His intentions that cannot be denied. God is raising up leaders today. So President of the United States, I tell you, from the time of your youth, the Spirit of God has kept you. Eight-year-old boy, God kept you and put in you a seed of desire that you had never put your hand to as of yet. But for this very present hour, for this season and for this time, 
you will find the hand of the Lord maneuvering you into places of understanding, desperate situations, and yet a spirit of peace and calm will reign and rule in your spirit. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for the President of the United States declaring this. God's wisdom is with you. God's anointing is with you. God's passion is in you. And see the growth and see the work and see the wisdom that God will reveal through the words of your mouth. Because it is the Lord who has placed you in position. In the position, yes, of power and righteousness declare his name to declare his name to the nations of the earth it is God who reigns it is God who rules it is God who is omnipresent in purpose promise and power we are victorious we are overcomers the word says come unto me all you that labor and all you that are heavy laden to everyone today, tonight, to the listening, to the watching, the televised audience out there, to everyone in this place, God is saying, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke on you and learn of me. God isn't concerned about what the enemy may want to try to do to you because God already holds your future in his hands. Satan didn't come up with the idea for your future. God did. Satan didn't come up or draw out the documents of your destiny. God Almighty has done that. It is the Lord who holds you in the promise of his hand and the glory of his might. And God's saying to this generation, focus your love and your passion upon me. Worship me and call upon me and I will answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Inscrutable things. God's going to reveal things to this generation and to this nation unlike we have ever known before. We're not down and we're not out. And we're not over. The Spirit of God is raising up the kings and the priests of this nation to make a declaration that we are not going to go crawling on our bellies to any authority or any power. And when we're on our face, it will be before the presence of Almighty God in contriteness, in brokenness, and a consecrated nation that the blood of His cross and the power of His resurrection resides on the inside of you. So nation of the earth, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready because God is saying this to you. I've given you the spirit of liberty, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of peace, the spirit of promise, and the spirit of power. And you're going to know that I am God in the midst of thee. Give the Lord praise.
stop. We would have gone on forever tonight, but I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for being here. I didn't want to finish the program without saying thank you very much. And uh, if you would, please put the address for um, the church up on the screen so I can read it. Christ Memorial Church, 13333 Vaughn Street, San Fernando Valley, California, right there. Every Sunday, what time are church, church services? 8.30 and 11. Right there. If you want to experience what you've just experienced with them, show up Sunday morning. I want to say something real quick. Come here, Pastor. I looked into the camera the other day, and I said there was somebody watching, that there was a project out there. I have been trying to do a feature motion picture for the black community. And I looked into the camera the other day, and I said, I need a project. I know you're watching right now. And are you ready for this? The guy showed up in the church service Sunday morning with one of the most incredible projects that I promise you, you heard the word of the Lord. Now, we prayed in our church that we would have influence over actors and writers and directors and in through the door walked this brother who just happens to pastor 35 young up and coming and very well known actors in his church he just happened to walk in pastor earl while you were there then the prophetic word came over you and what did pastor gary say to you pastor gary what he actually said to me was every single thing that God said to me three years ago. And if you gather, you see that I'm not just a brother from Inglewood. Okay? Right? And what happened is that three years ago, God spoke to me. God spoke to me in London, England. I was born and raised in London, England. And the Lord spoke to me to go full-time into full-time ministry sell up our home, give everything away, and move to California, USA. And my wife had the word a week before I did. How many realize the Holy Spirit and your wife sound a lot alike? <laughs> you know what? You're going to have to continue your story some other time because we're out of time. I have to say thank you. Pastor Gary Zamora, our church is Time and Destiny Church, right there on 3400 Kawanga. And there it is right there. That's the Hanna-Barbera Cartoon Facility. And you're welcome every Sunday at 1030. And I want to say thank you to Robert Kayanja. Pastor Danny Diaz, run up here real quick. In about 15 seconds, your program, Your Days Are Written, is on TBN following this broadcast. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Tune in. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. Thank you, everybody, for being with us tonight. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. We're so glad you've been with us for Praise the Lord. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today. Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, write TBN, P.O. Box 768, Station B, Ottawa, Ontario, K1P 5P8. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.